Well, Mata, thank you so much for being here today, not only for the book signing, but also this interview. I My appreciate pleasure. it. My pleasure. Thank you. We're excited to have you. Um, before we kind of talk about the book, I'm wondering, what does a day in the life of Matab look like? If there's an average day, if there is, what does I that don't look know. like? I'm so far removed right now from my normal life that uh, I don't really know what an average day is for me in these days. I'm, these days it's interviews because the book was, was just released and fun fun stuff like coming and signing books and talking to all kinds of fascinating people. Sure. But uh, a normal day for me is just very uneventful. Okay, okay. <laughs> I do a lot of entertaining at home and That's good. cooking with friends and eating with friends. And <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Yes. So if it weren't a normal or if it weren't a book signing period right now, if your book hadn't just released, mm -hmm. are you a writer? Are you a speaker? What do you kind of do? Well, profession wise, what would you say your profession is? I don't know. I'm in between. I'm waiting to figure out what God has in store for me next. So, before I wrote, I worked at a mental health organization. Okay. And I had different roles there. My favorite was um, kind of community relations work. So, I did uh, community education and marketing, event planning, fundraising, planned a golf outing every year. Oh. I'm just, it was so much fun. Yes. I, I loved my job. And uh, then I did some legal work too, uh, with the court systems okay. for uh, patients with mental health issues. Um, yeah. But I had to leave that full time so that I could write full time. Right. And then this whole process of writing has been so elongated. And then in the after I finished writing and editing, I got sick. Oh. I have lupus. Oh. And so for the last two and a half years, I've been, my, my routine has been taking medicine and sleeping and Right. Working very hard to get better, <coughs> seeing lots of doctors, yes. and uh, just this last spring, the doctors sort of have kind of let me out of the house. I was in quarantine for a little oh, more no. than a year, okay. <laughs> so now I get to go out in public again and That's good. That's good. be around real people. Well, we're glad you're able to come out now and come here. Uh, we'll you. certainly keep you in our prayers as well. For I that. appreciate that. The, Absolutely. It's been really amazing. I mean, the... As soon as word was out that my lupus was, was flaring and that I wasn't doing well, I was literally getting contacted from people around the world, people yeah. I didn't even know, saying, we're praying for you, our church is praying for you. Right. I mean, there was a church that every year for, every month for a year, sent me a letter wow. telling me that they were praying. And That's I mean, awesome. just, it's such a blessing. Yes. And God is good. He hears those prayers. Amen. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Now, in talking about the book, Mm -hmm. um, as a full-time writer. Your mom first wrote a book about your guys' story. Uh, was it late 80s, was it? We escaped from Iran in 1986, and uh, almost immediately she was approached and asked to write. Wow. And she's faster at things than I am. <laughs> <laughs> the book was, her book, Not Without My Daughter, was published in the U.S. in 1987. Okay, wow, that was very quick. Yes. yes. <laughs> so we... We have it from her point of view. How come you decided to write it from your point of view? And why now, I guess? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, when Mom wrote, she didn't anticipate that the book would be published all over the world. Right. And it was, and it was actually, um, I mean, it was successful in America, but it was more successful in Europe. Hmm. And the publishers in a lot of these countries became like family to us especially this one editor in Germany. And I wrote about her, Anya. Okay. She was just, I'm so thankful God put her in my life. And it was her dream for me to write my memories. She, right. she thought it was so neat that I had my own perspective and I remembered things from you know, a child's perspective. Mm -hmm. And she really wanted me to write that. And I didn't want to. <laughs> I wanted to live my own life and do my own thing. And... But yet this opportunity was here, and I was very appreciative of that. So several years ago, I was asked again if I would consider writing, and this time Anya was very sick. She was elderly, she'd had several strokes, and she was in a nursing home. And so I thought, well, God's giving me one more shot at doing this for Anya. Yes. And so, hence okay. the timing. Yes, okay. Yeah. And there it is today. Mm -hmm. I kind of read about your mom's book that it was more chronicling the events leading up to and then right after but do you talk more about post escape do you talk more about mm -hmm. growing up having um, I watched a video about you kind of having 
deep hatred towards your father. Mm -hmm. um, is that touched on in the book at all? It is. Okay. It is. So mom wrote almost immediately after our escape. Right. And I'm writing now, you know, this January it'll be 30 years after our escape. Okay. And so what I was excited about is then you know, I got to tell how God used this difficult experience for good. And there's so much good that's come from it. Yeah. And so that really is my focus. In, right. in the book is is talking about uh, you know all the good that all the blessings right. that have come from this difficult time. When did faith kind of play a factor? Like when did mm -hmm. you? I don't know how old you were when you became a Christian or. That's such a hard question. I don't ever remember not being a Christian. I mean, I don't Fair ever enough. remember a moment thinking, okay, now I'm a Christian. Right. Right. Uh, you know, um, my dad was a Muslim. But I think I was always a Christian. Okay. You know, there were people in our lives. Mom was a Christian, and there were other people in my life who shared their faith with, with me as a small child. And uh, yeah, I don't remember a time when That's when I good. wasn't. Okay. But after our escape, to get back to your hatred question, yes. you know, after our escape, I was filled with hatred, and we were afraid that my dad would come and kidnap me. Yeah. And so mom enrolled me in a Lutheran elementary school. It was small and she thought the teachers could keep an eye on me and I'd be safer there. And I think that was God's way of putting me in Mrs. Hudson's hands. Okay. And she was just such a, a wonderful, loving lady. She was my first grade teacher, and she taught me about forgiveness, and she taught me about Joseph, and she taught me you know, more about God's love and his protection and, and uh, helped me learn to feel safe and, and recognize that no matter what, even if my dad did kidnap me, you know, there was no place on earth he could take me that was far enough away that he's taking me away from God's protection and God's love. Right. And so she really helped me learn to forgive. And at the same time, at home, mom recognized this hatred and how much, how pervasive it was in my life and how much it was affecting me. And so she worked hard to help me remember the good times we had shared as a family. And we went through the photo albums, and she recognized that this Iranian heritage that I hated so much because I hated my dad so much, right. um, it was mine. No matter what, it would always be a part of me. Yeah. And so she really helped me come to terms with that and, and learn to celebrate the good in that. Well, that's great. I didn't realize it was at such a young age that already that forgiveness was kind of being pushed down to you and instilled mm -hmm. into you. So It really was, and I'm so thankful for that. Because I can't imagine what life would have been like if I didn't have these wonderful adults who took the time to nurture me and teach me these important lessons at right. such a young age. And But then again, you know, I think forgiveness is a process. Absolutely. And every time my dad would reappear in my life or interfere again in my life, or I would realize that this threat is still here yeah. and hasn't completely gone away, then I would be angry again and, and resentful and I would have to work through you know, and forgive yeah. him all over again. Right. So it was an ongoing process. Is that why? This is not in my list. This might we might. I don't know if this is an appropriate question. So I I read or saw like um, something from his perspective that he tried to reach out to you many times, but you mm -hmm. declined contact. It's true. It is true. Okay. Is that why you chose not to contact him because you didn't want to re feel those feelings of anger and just hatred toward him? No, actually, it's quite the opposite. Okay. Uh, in all of those years, I didn't give him any reason to hope that we could have a relationship. I didn't give him any reason to hope that we would ever communicate with each other again. And yet he held on to that hope. Right. And I knew if I communicated with him, he would never get what he wanted from me. And that would be agony for him. And I knew how dangerous he was when he was provoked or when yeah. he was angry or when he didn't get what he wanted. And so I thought, you know, th there's just no good to come of this for anybody. Sure. I didn't need anything from him. I was, you know, I had come to an understanding of, of these things, and I was at peace, and I, I didn't need to uh, have any apology from him or right. any validation from him. I wouldn't have gotten, I, mean, I didn't think yeah. I would have gotten it. Right. Uh, but he certainly wouldn't have gotten from me what he wanted, and... It would have been worse off for him. Yeah. yeah, that's understandable. All mm -hmm. right. Well, um, I guess my final question about the book: Do you think you got more out of this the writing process, yeah. or do you think the readers will get more? Um, I don't know. 
that's a great question. <laughs> um, I think I definitely learned a lot in the writing process. Uh, I'd known my whole life that God really, he puts the right people in our lives at the right time. Right. I could have told you that if you'd asked me that five years ago before I agreed to write a book. Yeah. But when I wrote, I started by just, you know, writing down all of these snippets of experiences. I called them dots. And then at some point I took all these dots and I thought, okay, well, let's put it together into something cohesive. And it was really neat for me to see as that happened that you know, this, this picture is emerging of just how God was providing all these years yeah. and just how over and over he's putting the right people in my lives at the right time. And you know, so that was a real gift to, to see that. You know, again, <laughs> to yeah, be reminded right. of God's grace and just how good He is. Yes. So, so I got good. a lot out of it. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and hopefully the readers will as well. I'm sure there's I a hope. lot in there to take I away. Hope. I did just say last question, but that just reminded me of one more thing. Um, was it hard to go back and kind of revisit these memories? Did it? That's a good question. Um, I, it was, but I think not for the reason people might expect. It, it was. You know, I'd worked through these things, so uh, I think it serves us well in life not to dwell too much in the negative mm. yes. moments of our past, but it is also good to go back and revisit so that you can appreciate you know, the blessings that have come from those experiences. Um, what was hardest for me was to be removed from society. So yeah. <laughs> I love to be around people. Right. and. Uh, it was a huge change for me to go from event planning and you know working with so many people on a daily basis to then having to remove myself from the world and uh, just kind of live in the world of my own head and yeah. <laughs> and just me and the computer all day. Right. So yeah. it was very lonely. <laughs> I was very happy to be done and, and yeah. get to socialize. <laughs> all right. So does that mean for the future, no more writing? Or no maybe. more writing like this. No more writing like that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, there may be a, a cookbook in my future. There I don't you know. Go. And you can team up with somebody so that you're always around. It's, well, that, else. this is my thought process, yes. exactly. Yes. That's so, mom great. has always wanted to write a cookbook together. Oh, that would so. be awesome. Who knows? Maybe that's what comes next. Well, we'll keep an eye out for it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for doing this interview. I appreciate it. My and gosh. for coming to do the book signing. We're happy to have you. So. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate the opportunity. Yes. Thank you.